These answer choices are definitely verbs. So that'd be the first thing I think about is singular plural. Well, we have plural here with are, uh, plural here with were, but had and highly prized, these are not verbs that have that property of being singular or plural. They're basically both, right? They had been highly prized. He had been highly prized. It doesn't matter which one we're, we're using. So that means it's probably not about singulars and plurals. It's, it seems to mostly to me be about the tense of the verb. Genuinely, when does this take place? So let's take a look. Um, we got to read the whole thing when it's about past, present, or future tenses. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, automobiles were commonly referred to as horseless carriages after the older technology they still resembled. Known as the Brass Era, this period in automotive design is remembered for its grandeur and artistry, its vehicles blank by collectors for their ornate detailing and gleaming brass fittings. Um, that's that's really sneaky. So first of all, they want us to think this is the past tense, right? They're talking about in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. We have a lot of past tense verbs, were, um, referred, right? This period, now we switch, is no, remembered for its grandeur and artistry. And so now we've moved into the present, right? Collectors today are 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 collecting these cars, right? So it's not the past tense. They had not, it's not that they had been highly prized by collectors or were high, high, highly prized by collectors. They are highly prized by collectors. However, that's also a trap because then the sentence gets all messy. So this is actually, this is so sneaky. I think this is just basically what I would think of as a to and ing question. Even though there's no to verb, there's no ing verb, it's still behaving the same way. It's about the structure of the sentence. So let's take a look here. Uh, known as the brass era, this period in automotive design is remembered for its grandeur and artistry. That is a sentence. Now look what's coming. We have a comma. So we can't just throw in another sentence because then we have a run on. We have to use a comma and a word like and or something like that. But if we put choice A in that blank, its vehicles are highly prized by collectors for their ornate detailing and gleaming brass fittings. That's another sentence. It, it could stand alone. And so that comma right there is not enough for us to join those two things together. So it creates a run on sentence, even though it sounds fine. It, it, the punctuation is the issue, right? So we think this is a question about verbs. It's really a question about punctuation. And that's that's the hardest thing with this two and ing rule and why even the name isn't that great. It's it's so hard to recognize. The reason I call it the two and ing rule is most of the time when they're testing sentence structure using verbs, the word one of the verbs will have a two, one of the verbs will have an ing, and we'll start to get on that train of thought. But this is evidence that there are exceptions and this is really sneaky. The answer is C because basically we're not even talking about verbs anymore. This is kind of just becoming an, an adjective uh, in a way. It's describing the vehicles. It's 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 so sneaky. But basically, if we put C in there, it's vehicles highly prized by collectors for their ornate detailing, detailing and gleaming brass fittings. It's no longer a sentence. Now it's a very filled out, but still not complete clause. It's an extra clause. And so now we're allowed to attach it with a comma. So there you go. I mean, it's the kind of thing that's obvious to me because I'm always checking for this kind of stuff. I'm always thinking, what's the rule? What's going on? And I, you know, I know that there are three verb tense rules and telling them apart is extremely important. And that the traps are that they will try to make us think about whether it's past, present, or future tenses when it's actually about something else. It's either about singulars and plurals, which we kind of dismissed, or it's about in this kind of sentence structure stuff. So if you fell for this trap, that that's unfortunate, but I, I learned this lesson is like, know that the SAT can do this, that, that questions about verbs are, are might not be about the thing that you think they're about, right? They may not be about just when does it take place? What is it, the past, the present, or the future? It might be something more elaborate than that. And so if you are gonna fall for a trap in the grammar questions, my bet would be it would be a verb question because you're thinking about a verb rule that isn't really being tested. So try to just look for traps, you know, just kind of be alert and as you're doing them. And, and I think you'll catch them like I did here, you know, but it's sneaky. This is a very sneaky question.